Heaven is filling with earth's broken lives. The open fields of a winter's afternoon lie slanted on the hillside. Hawks circle their prey, and fat coyotes strut confidently through the long grasses. The sky has delivered itself and is departing. This, too, is the way of human life. We must find our role in the tragic comedy of living. It is not an end game. Our moral weariness closing out. Games it played. Life is or can be a restoration of the soul to its primitive health. Primitive health is purity, a recovery of the divine nature, the renewal of our souls after the image of God. Heaven is filling with earth's broken lives restoring us from the lower world to glorious blessedness and beauty. A life crushed by pain and sorrow will be fashioned to a harp so poignant as to touch the happiness of those now living there. Earth's saddest failures will be lifted up to heaven's glory. The path of our prodigality was rebellion, ruin, then repentance, reconciliation, restoration. In creation we began. The fall was the wrongness of all, all human, uh, which humans are, encapsulated in one event. Redemption, the only way out. Restoration, the very and unusual newness of everything. Our end will not be a consolation, but a symmetry of what was to be, a life combined of heaven and earth. If we face what we fear, you will be there. We will never be alone. Those who die alone have not recognized the piteous state of their existence. In heaven there is a pieta, not of Mary holding Jesus, but of Jesus holding us in his great pity for the lives that never need have been. You have seen us through the wretchedness and darkness and bondage of evil. Perhaps at some stage of our eternity we will recognize that the supernatural order we are living is very like the natural order first given us. The natural order is a culture of love, far beyond any we have known. Christ's miracles were not the suspension of the natural order, but the restoration of the natural order. We do not know this broken-hearted aspect of God, which works tirelessly for the rebuilding of mankind. That which was seen and believed among 500 or more was declared to be the omnipresent Holy Spirit, thus to counsel and console us in every moment. Those who know this as a reality are the children of God, growing in awareness of your presence. How does the earth sustain? He who went up is ever in the prayer of God. As on earth you went out into a mountain to pray, so in heaven the Son intercedes with the Father. One moment short of your attention would be our expiration. Had we no advocate, our life will have disappeared. This extraordinary and sublime devotion continues in heaven as it was in Galilee all the night and every hour of the day. Perhaps the disciples became overly used to your habits, such that in the last night's garden they slept as they were used to do. We all have nights of jeopardy, in the which only you can save us. If the disciples could see, they will have seen your glory, and we, if we could see, see yours, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father. Yours is a fullness of grace and truth. Give us a mountainside on which to pray. When we go up, we are anxious of getting on with our lives, None recognizes the eternal constancy of your prayer for us and that we should join you in the seeking out of our Father, yours and ours. For in these supplications you join our brotherhood as though you were but a man. It has come to pass in the passage of our days 
that we slip further and further into our lives, away from this coalition of prayer. When we settle to our heavenly life, it will not be joy and prancing about, but a deep joy of being in your presence, talking and listening upon the mountain. Amen.